house of the redeemed servant. Big head yeah. on the beat. Hold up. You're my yacht. Please say the yacht. Yacht by Shimmy, I was Shabarakata. Quam Yasharala, giving all praise to the now with your by Shimma Mashiach. I'm reading Jeremiah and I'm learning of my history. Everything ain't the same. If they claim, then they miss me. I'm changing my name, cause the game ain't the same. About to pick up these laws, cause I ain't in them. Inf- too late. That's not the unspoken thought of the adolescent boy who wants to seduce his girlfriend before her parents get home. It's got nothing to do with 8 p.m. Sex by eight or it's too late is the motto for the North American Man-Boy Love Association or NAMBLA and they mean eight years old. Now most of you probably never heard of NAMBLA. I know I hadn't until recently but that old adage of what you don't know won't hurt you is far from the truth in this case. In fact, by the time I'm finished speaking with you, I think you'll agree with me that NAMBLA is a parent and child's worst nightmare. I first stumbled onto NAMBLA while watching late night television. And as a mother, a Christian, and simply a person with a healthy mind, I became outraged when I heard about this group of organized pedophiles. A pedophile is a person whose object of sexual desire is a child. Well, my outrage spurred me on to become more educated about NAMBLA, and I feel it's imperative that you learn about them, too. So tonight, I'm going to talk about three important points on NAMBLA. I'm going to talk about who they are, how they go about accomplishing their goals, and how they've influenced the way society thinks. Let's get started by talking about who they are. NAMBLA is the largest group of organized pedophiles in the United States, and according to FBI Special Agent Kenneth Lanning, they're also the most dangerous. They were established in Boston in 1978, and this group claims to be a civil rights and political organization who advocate what they call consensual intergenerational relationships. In other words, they advocate men having sex with little boys. Nambla's in Washington lobbying to do away with the legal age for consensual sex. They feel like they're an oppressed minority whose civil rights have been infringed upon, not a group of perverts who want to abuse innocent children. They're trying to convince the public that it's healthy and psychologically beneficial for a boy to have sex with a man. And you know what the scary part is? Some of our elected officials and professional educators are showing signs of agreeing with them. And I'll show you that in just a little while. Many of NAMBLA's uh, members are intelligent, educated men who work professionally with children. Therefore, they have easier access to your sons and mine. For example, The editor of their monthly newsletter is a public school teacher in New York. 
His name's Peter Melzer, and he's published an article entitled, In Praise of the Penises, or, quote, How to Make That Special Boy Feel Good. Now, I can't speak for everyone here, but personally, I don't want a man like Peter Melzer in charge of my son's classroom. Although NAMBLA claims they support youth liberation and empowerment of young people, a drug and alcohol counselor for the New Hampshire State Department of Corrections knows differently. His name's Floyd Jositis, and he infiltrated NAMBLA and said that children were being abducted and used from one pedophile house to another all across the country. He also said that child pornography was just being traded off like playing cards. And last month, the New Hampshire police found NAMBLA material in a car thought to be used in the abduction and murder of a 10-year-old boy, according to the Associated Press. So you can't help but wonder when you see a child's face on the back of a milk carton or go into Walmart and see all the posters of the missing children on the wall if some of these kids weren't victims of NAMBLA, too. And you might also be wondering just how big of a problem is this? What's the likelihood of your child in a small town like Kokomo becoming a victim? Let me share some statistics I found on the internet. The Omaha, Nebraska Police Department estimates that there are at least 500 known pedophiles in the Omaha area. And the U.S. Department of Justice says the typical pedophile will molest at least 77 children before he's caught. And most of them are never caught. That would indicate that there are literally thousands of kids in the Omaha area who've become victims. Now, being the sister of a police investigator in the small town of Wabash and having been married to a police officer, believe me when I tell you that small towns have their share of pedophiles too. Now, their crimes might not always be reported in the newspapers, but they're being committed nonetheless. Now that we've taken a look at who NAMBLA are, let's look at how they go about accomplishing their goals or what makes them so dangerous to our kids. Their credo is, the North American Man-Boy Love Association is both political and educational. We work to organize support for boys and men who have or desire consensual sexual and emotional relationships and to educate society on their positive nature. This credo is inside each of their monthly newsletters called the Bulletin. The Bulletin also contains step-by-step -step instructions on how to locate, seduce, sexually assault, and then prevent disclosure of the crimes by their victims. The Bulletin contains an article entitled Entrapment of the Month which alerts its members to our government's child pornography sting operations. In one newsletter alone, according to Child Lures on the Internet, NAMBLA correctly identified 10 sting operations in five different states across the country, so you'd better believe that this organization has some connections. Now, in attempting to accomplish their goals, NAMBLA mails their publications free of charge to hundreds of imprisoned pedophiles. That new state prison is going to be built up here at Grissom, practically in my backyard. So you can imagine how thrilled I was to learn that month after month, NAMBLA's training the imprisoned pedophile how to molest a little bit better so that he doesn't get caught the next time. I guess the imprisoned pedophile isn't really a threat to our children. But what happens after he serves his time? He gets out of that prison. And then is he literally going to be in your backyard? Now, in addition to their monthly uh, publications, NAMBLA accomplishes their goals by attending political rallies, conventions, and conferences. They get on the internet and swap ideas on how to abduct and abuse children. In fact, Child Lure says that pedophiles meet anonymously on the net and exchange your victims' names, descriptions, and even their photographs. So if all this information isn't enough to make you realize that we've got a serious problem here, strap on your seatbelts because here's where the ride gets really wild. Now I'm going to show you how NAMBLA's influenced the way society thinks. Remember earlier I mentioned that NAMBLA feels like they're an oppressed minority whose civil rights have been infringed upon, not a group of perverts who want to abuse innocent children. The American Civil Liberties Union has defended NAMBLA on that stance. In an article in Time Magazine regarding condemning NAMBLA, the ACLU said, well, if it's NAMBLA today, who is it tomorrow? And NAMBLA's been a member of the International Gay and Lesbian Association, or the IGLA, for the last 13 years. In 1994, the United Nations, with support of the United States, moved to provide funds and legitimacy to their agenda by granting official consultant status to the IGLA, according to a 1994 edition of Human Events. And earlier I mentioned that some of our professional educators are showing signs of agreeing with NAMBLA. John Money, Professor Emeritus of Medical Psychology at John Hopkins University, said the following in an interview in 1991. If I were to see a case of a boy aged 10 or 11 
feels intensely erotically attracted to a man in his 20s or 30s. And if the relationship was totally mutual, and if the bonding was genuinely totally mutual, then I wouldn't call it pathological in any way. And on the Rush Limbaugh program in June of 92, it was reported that the University of Massachusetts has declared pedophilia a minority status. And in conclusion, some of our, uh, there's been some pretty scary statements from our own U.S. Senate too. In a U.S. Senate investigations report, it said, quote, pro-pedophilia groups such as NAMBLA are not as severe a threat to our children as we may feel they are. Now, can you think of a greater threat to our children than a group who's trying to get them to have sex by eight or it's too late? I can't. Thank you. Shalom. We are the brothers of the house of the redeemed servant. Isaiah 48.20 Okay, um, we're coming to you tonight in a topic on homosexuality. There's a big uproar and, uh, you know, we had made a couple statements a couple years ago in regards to the homosexuality finally being uh, accepted worldwide uh, and nationwide. You know, homosexuals being able to be married and, and, and have gay rights or whatever. All right, so we had made a statement a, a few years back that this homosexual rights will eventually lead to pedophilia. All right, which is, is, is open sexual relations with children. All right, so, you know, we want to we wanna deal with this topic. And we're going to go into this information looking at the historical records and how they operated in ancient times. If you do not know the past, you will be doomed to repeat the past. Understand that. So what we see today and what's going on is nothing new. The Bible says there is nothing new under the sun. Understand that. All right? So we just want to take this opportunity to shoot, salute the elders. All right, of all Yasha Allah, and uh, we are in the body of Masharah Yasha Allah. We are the branch of the house of the redeemed servant. All right, so like we always do, we want to start with Colossians 3 and 17. All right, Colossians chapter 3, verse 17. Bring it out. And it reads, and whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all. Bahashim Hamashiach Yahawashai, given the water to the Elohim and the Abinawa Yahweh by Shem Hamashiach Yahawashai. So we're going to do all things in the name of our Savior, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, but we're going to call him by his Hebrew name, which is Hamashiach Yahawashai. All right? So um, we're going into this specific topic. All right, because you have to understand, of the spirit of the people that's behind pushing homosexuality, and what is their ultimate agenda? All right, their ultimate agenda is to destroy the male figure. It is to destroy the defense of our nation. So, so the men who are supposed to defend the nation will be effeminized and will not be able to defend the nation. Their ambitions, their thoughts, and the, the things of their heart are not for protection, but to be a woman, all right? So, again, we're going to go into the spirit of the people that's pushing this. We know that they're known as the so-called white man. And we're talking about those at the very top, all right? We're not here saying all white people are homosexuals. What we're saying is those that are at the very top have an agenda. And their agenda is to destroy the children of Israel, all right? So what we're going to do is go to Psalms 83. You have to understand. 
understand it. E everybody else, in the, all the other nations, are just a casualty. Okay? They're just a casualty. The ultimate goal and the ultimate agenda is to destroy the children of Israel, and we're going to prove that. All right? Psalms 83, please. Psalms chapter 83, verse 1. And it reads, Keep not thy, thou silence, O Yahweh. Hold not thy peace, and be not still, O Yahweh. Verse 2. For lo, thy enemies make a tumult. Who make a tumult? Thy enemies. The enemies of who? The children of Israel make a what? Make a tumult. Come on. And they that hate thee have lifted up the head. Verse 3, they have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. Uh -huh. Verse 4, they have said, come, let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Yasha'ala may be no more in remembrance. That the name of Yasha'ala be no more in remembrance. Understand that. All right? So, their goal is what? Read that last part again. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. That the name of Yasha'ala be no more in remembrance. So they're going to cut us off from being a nation. Now that goes off into crafty counsel. What crafty counsel? To utilize the spirit of homosexuality to effeminize the men, to break down the defense mechanism, our natural defense, which is the men, is the natural protector of his home. So we're gonna, they're going to break that down through a psychological program called homosexuality, all right? Which is nothing, nothing more than another psychological programming working in conjunction with the other programs that we're already under, like the Willie Lynch, okay? So now... Who's behind this spirit? Let's see. Let's go to Hebrews. chapter 12 verse 16 come on now. Hebrews 12 verse 16 bring it out least there be any fornicator any what fornicator when you look up this word fornicator it doesn't just mean you know sex outside of marriage fornication comes in various forms whether it be spiritual fornication. What, and fornication is any illegal sex that the Bible says we're not to participate in, like bestiality, homosexuality. These are fornication. That's fornication. And it says what? Least there be any fornicator uh -huh. or profane person. Or profane person, come on. As Esau. As who? As Esau. Understand that. So Esau is the modern day white man. So called Caucasian people from the Caucasus Mountains of Georgia, Russia. All right. Those that lack melanin. Understand that. All right. These are the ones that's behind your porn industry. They're behind uh, 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 pushing bestiality. They're behind uh, uh, fornication and, and homosexuality. They're behind it. You go to the very top, they're there. And we're going to be placing some videos in conjunction with this video of a Pacific group called NAMBA. See, so now this is not only dealing with homosexuality. This is homosexuality leading to pedophilia, which means that not all homosexuals are pedophiles, but the, the, the rights or the gay rights that's been given to homosexuals will allude or lead to what? Pedophilia and the rights of gay uh, uh, gay people that deal with pedophilia. This uh, is 
it's, it's alluding to that. Eventually, they're going to be claimed to be a minority. They're going to claim to be that their rights are being infringed upon. They're going to they're, they're going to start fighting for their rights. See, because you have allowed homosexuals to fight for their rights, which have taken the rights of the uh, the social rights of African Americans, so called. All right, the civil rights movement. They have taken that upon themselves and said it's a it's a homosexual movement. Now it's going to be a movement for pedophilia. And we got some videos here that just is up. Uh, listen, it's outrageous and utterly disgusting. We have an eight-year-old Edomite child confessing to a whole community in America. That's what for all you naysayers. Anyone said that America is not Babylon, you got to be out of your mind. This is the daughter of Babylon. All right, this is the most wicked kingdom on this earth. All right, things are going on in America that you are not even privy to. You don't even have the knowledge or, or the know-how to understand the depths of depravity that this place is sinking to. All right, and we're going to share and bring out this information. But it's a little Edomite boy that's eight years old. All right, who's confessing to a whole community? He says schools are involved. Parents are involved, teachers are involved, administrators are involved. He said him alone is in a school of over 200 children and all of them have had sexual relations with him. Him, the teachers, they have little sex parties and all of that, all right? So you have to understand, man, this is the worst place on the earth and it's the great and it's the example for the rest of the earth. Everybody wants to be like America. All right? And this is what's going on. This is the place of every foul and hateful bird. And every wicked spirit is dwelling in America, man. And we're here to expose some of these wicked spirits. All right? So now, read, read on what you got there. <clears throat> Hebrews 12, verse 16. Read it again. Least there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau. Understand that. Read on. Who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. Understand that. So now, when you deal with the spirit of homosexuality, all kind of demons come upon you just from that sexual act. All right? And then when you are, when you are living your lifestyle as such, these are the spirits that you will be dealing with. Let us go to Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, let us start at verse 24. Let's start at 21. So like 21, family. Romans 1, 21. Come on. Romans 1, verse 21. Because that, when they knew Yahweh, they glorified him not as Yahweh. Exactly. So what do they put on the money? In God we trust. See, they have condemned their self. So it says what? Read it again. Because that, when they knew Yahweh, they glorified him not. They knew him, but they glorified him not. Come on. As Yahweh. Understand that this is the book of Romans. I want to make this very clear so you can understand the spirit of Esau, man. The modern day, I mean, the, the Romans are of the seed line of Esau, man. They are Edom. Understand that. Come on. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imagination. In their what? Imagination. So in their imaginations alluding to, to despicable sexual acts. Come on. And their foolish heart. And their what? Foolish heart. The Most High said their heart is foolish. Come on. Was darkened. Was what? Was dark. So when you're dealing with the spirit of homosexuality, your heart is what? Darkened. Darkened. Come on. Verse 22. Uh-huh. Professing themselves to be wise. Doing what? Professing themselves to be wise. Professing themselves to be wise. They became fools. They became what? They became fools. Come on. And changed the glory of the uncorruptible Allahim into an image 
made like a corruptible man, uh -huh. and to birds, and four-footed beasts, and creeping things. Mm -hmm. Verse 24. Wherefore Yahweh also gave them up to uncleanliness. So now the Most High said, okay, if you want to deal with de depravity, I'm just going to let you just go all the way in. You're going to go all the way in deep. Come on. Through the lust of their own hearts. Through the what? Through the lust of their own hearts. So not only are you going to deal with homosexuality, now you're going to go even further and deal with pedophilia. You're going to deal with sexual acts with children. Homosexual acts with children, man. All right? Come on. To dishonor their own bodies. To do what? To dishonor their own bodies. To dishonor their own bodies. Now you have to understand. There's a group called NAMBA. All right? Which we're going to be sharing in this video. You're going to see this. Uh, that, listen. That, that's, that's all, it's all about man-boy love. That's what it's about. And so we have to put this information out so you can be aware and understand what kind of world you living in. Come on. To dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Read on. 25. Who changed the truth? What did they do? Who changed the truth? They said it's okay for you to be a homosexual. God loves you anyway. He did what? Who changed the truth? They changed the truth, man. Understand that. They changed the truth. Come on. Of Yahweh into a lie. Into a lie. Because the Most High never said that it was okay to be a damn homosexual, man. All right? Then they try to say, well, well, brother, you tell lies. Uh, I try to compare minor sins or sins, period, with other sins. Listen, I want to make something clear. There are, uh, there are sins that are worse than other sins. Some sins are worthy of death. And guess what? Homosexuality is one of those sins. And we're going to go into it in the Old Testament. I don't want to hear that. Oh, that's that old testament. All right? Because it's clarifying in here. That's why we're starting in a new testament. Come on. And worship and serve the creature more than the creator. So they start worshiping themselves. They start worshiping man. They start worshiping man on earth instead of worshiping the creator. Come on. Who is blessed forever. Amen. Read on. For this cause, uh -huh. Yahweh gave them up. Unto vow affection. Now he's gonna give you up even further. You're gonna go even deeper into whatever madness that's on your heart, like what? Like bestiality. Like pedophilia. Alright? They sit and say, well, well, brother, I don't it, it, it doesn't matter what uh, what people are doing in the privacy of their own home. Okay? Well, listen, it does it doesn't matter to me either. But why are they gonna bring out and try to make rights, alright? Right? And try and try to fight to do it in the public. I thought it didn't matter what went on in their, in their bedroom, but now they're fighting to do it in the public. And they have passed rights for they can do so. Now I'm sitting in a restaurant with my eight-year-old daughter, and two homosexuals is kissing each other down, two grown men, and, I, and I'm just supposed to be okay with that. Are two women, all right? They're trying to say, oh, it's women, it's okay. No, it's not okay. They're just slobbing each other down all in the public, then I, and then I make a complaint. And I, I'm the one, they want to put charges on me. When I'm sitting here with my daughter, all right, I don't even care if it was a man and a woman. You don't need to be acting like that in the public. But these homosexuals, they do, man. Understand that. They do to, to, to try to push the envelope, man, even further. Come on. For this cause, Yahweh gave them up unto vile affections. Read on. For even their women. Even what? Even their women. I thought it was okay for the women. Even their women. Even what? Even their women. Go ahead. Did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Even change the natural use which is against nature. Woman lying with woman. Which is abomination. Understand that, man. Come on. 27. And likewise, also the men. Leaving the natural use of the woman. Burned in their lust one toward another. Men with men. What? Men with men. Men with men, come on. Working that which is unseemly. Doing what? Working that which is unseemly. Working that which is unseemly, man. Come on. And receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. Understand that, come on. 
and even as they did not like to retain Yahweh in the Yahweh in their knowledge. They don't want to retain Yahweh in their knowledge. So much so that they got a gay Bible now. They got a Bible where they have removed all the things that they say against homosexuality, all right, and trying to pass it off as if it's okay. As they didn't want to retain what? Yahweh in their knowledge. They didn't want they didn't want the creator. Come on. Yahweh gave them over to a reprobate mind. Now they're dealing with the spirit of reprobate, man. And that's the problem, see? That's the problem. Reprobate is when you go about and trying to justify your wickedness, man. You sitting there and Now, we've been telling you all week about the controversy surrounding President Obama's safe school czar, Kevin Jennings. Tonight, we have new information on that story involving Jennings and his professed admiration for a supporter of the North American Man-Boy Love Association. Now, Jennings is on record having praised Harry Hay, an outspoken supporter of NAMBLA, and not surprisingly, of sexual relationships between young boys and older men. Now, we called Jennings' office for comment on the issue, but we got no response. And joining me now with more details on the story is a former FBI veteran agent who infiltrated the group NAMBLA, and he is also the author of The Last Undercover, the true story of an FBI's dangerous dance with evil. Bob Hamer is with us. Bob, welcome to the program. Thanks for being with us. Thanks, Sean, for having me. I appreciate it. All right. Now, you actually joined the group NAMBLA, what, in 2001? Just so people have an idea, before we get to the political controversy, tell us about you infiltrating this group. Actually, the infiltration was fairly easy. Uh, they had a website. I paid $35. I joined the group. They sent me a letter uh, praising me for my courageous step in joining the organization. I began to get uh, emails from them. I would subscribe to their magazine. They started to send me their magazine, but they wouldn't allow me to attend any of their secret underground meetings until I'd been a member for three years and had been sponsored by another uh, active duty member. All right. Well, what is NAMBLA's real agenda? They say publicly that it is to get rid of age consent laws, but it's deeper than that. What did you discover in your years having infiltrated them? Oh, yeah. It, they, they're hiding behind the First Amendment. Ostensibly, they claim that they are designed to abolish age of consent laws. I was in the organization for three years. I had attended two of their national conferences. I spoke with many of their members. I corresponded with about 175 of their members. At no time during my three-year infiltration was there ever any discussion about modifying age of consent laws, abolishing age of consent laws. Every conversation that I had was about where to go to have sex with little boys, how they could attract little boys, how they could groom little boys. That was their agenda. All right, you actually sat through a, a discussion at one of the seminars that you went to where they, they talked about, I, it's, it's almost unimaginable, about sex with an 18-month-old child. Is that correct? Yeah, that's, that's correct. At one of the conferences that I attended, there was a discussion about that it was actually okay, proper, there was nothing wrong with having oral sex on an 18-month-old boy. The oh. rationale being that little boys you know, play with themselves, they, they enjoy touching themselves. All right. So the men were actually bringing pleasure to the little boys by right. committing this is, oral sex. This, this is really sick and really twisted. Now this brings us to the issue of this guy, who is Harry Hay and his involvement, the guy that Jennings has praised, who is he? Harry Hay is a longtime radical. Uh, he is sort of a NAMBLA icon. If NAMBLA had a Hall of Fame, he would be in it. In fact, in their 2002, uh, when Harry Hay died, he was on the cover of their magazine, the NAMBLA Bulletin. Uh, Harry Hay l spoke at NAMBLA conferences. Uh, he, he marched with them when they, had their, when they were more public with, their, uh, with, with per, uh, participating in parades and, and all of that. All but right, yeah, well, he, Harry Hay. All right, well, what do you make then of our safe school czar saying about Harry Hay, you know, and this is him, you know, he was one of the people that always inspired me. What, what are we to conclude? Well, absolutely. I mean, he, he found that uh, Harry Hay was a person he admired, someone uh, that he, he must have followed the agenda. He knew the agenda of Harry Hay, and he certainly supported Harry Hay. And Harry Hay 
is a, is a strong advocate of NAMBLA, or was a strong advocate before he died in 2002. And so Jennings had to have known that? Oh, certainly. Uh, yeah. Harry Hay didn't hide his, his support for NAMBLA. Okay. Bob, thank you for being with us. I understand you also took down eight of these guys and got them off the street. Thank you for being with us. Appreciate it. And now, you know, Kevin Jennings' actions and, and associations have led some conservatives, by the way, including me, we're calling for Kevin Jennings' resignation. The question is, will it happen? And joining me now to discuss this is Iowa Congressman Steve King. He also is asking the president to get rid of uh, Kevin Jennings. Well, you just heard about the group NAMBLA. You heard about this guy that Kevin Jennings has praised, a guy that always inspired him, that was associated with this group. What are we to conclude? Well, I think we can conclude that President Obama's agenda and his associates and their fellow travelers have been appointed to influential positions in the United States government. And But this is a breathtaking reveal that you've done here, Sean, uh, to, to think that. I mean, I've said before that I think Kevin Jennings has got to be the poster boy for NAMLA, but to understand that he has also endorsed Harry Hay and uh, at least referenced his association with him, that tells you that at least they support him and his lifetime agenda as uh, now he's supposed to be the safe schools and drug-free schools czar and to think that uh, his lifetime work has been about the promotion of homosexuality within our schools and a lot of it within our elementary schools and to think of this association I can't imagine how the president can do anything if he cares about the values of America except simply fire him what, what, what uh, do you rather make, than wait for him to, re to resign. What do you make of him writing a forward for a book what the, the querying of elementary education and the other question is did the White House not vet this guy again or do they just or are these values acceptable what are we to conclude well, the forward of the book of Queering of Elementary Education uh, tells you a lot about the career of Kevin Jennings. And he also has four books that he's authored himself, and every one of them deal with homosexuality and, and focus on homosexuality within the schools. He's got a very narrow yeah. approach to this. And then I think that the president, whether they've actually vetted them or not, I right. think that the fellow travelers part of this thing is the vetting process. The people who advise the president have these kind of associations. Yeah. And so well, that's what we've seen happen, Sean. I, I haven't focused so much. I, I don't really, I'm more libertarian in terms of what people's preferences are, what adults do in the privacy mm -hmm. of their, their bedroom. That's, that's my position. I've been very clear over the years about this. But here's my problem. And this, this all got started because Jennings himself admitted that it was a 15-year-old boy that came mm -hmm. to him for counseling and w because the boy was having sex with an older male and an older adult which as the Washington Times said would be statutory rape. Now Jennings said he was 15. Now apparently the, the boy whose name is Brewster has come out and said no I was 16 at the time. Jennings said it was 15. So it also raises judgment because the only advice he gave oh, yeah. him I hope you were wearing a condom. I, I just can't believe there's not more outrage and that there's been no real questioning of the White House about this. Do you, do you foresee this in the future? What do you see happening? And I think that if the, if the American people rise up, uh, they can demand that the president remove Kevin Jennings. And it doesn't matter whether he, whether Brewster was 16 or 15, yeah. Kevin Jennings has said he believed he was 15. That makes him a mandatory reporter, and by law in Massachusetts, he was required to report the incident of sexual abuse of a child by an adult that was probably a decade or more older who, was, yeah. who had picked him up in the restroom of a bus stop. Right, uh, so this is the kind of person that would be the model for our education and it just cannot be tolerated Sean. Well Steve I agree and I stand by my position he needs to be fired the president needs to be questioned about it and so does uh, obviously the propagandist Robert Gibbs we're gonna continue to follow the story we're taking a lot of heat for doing it but congressman I'm sure you are too thanks for being with us I am he needs to be a model not not someone who has promoted this uh, homosexual agenda Sean. Well certainly it's a it's reckless judgment and reckless positions and we appreciate you being with us and coming up the CBO is it a beautiful lie? Uh, she told me a beautiful lie. Uh, she told me a beautiful lie. Uh, she told me a beautiful lie. Nigga name in the sky till the day I die. You ain't gotta lie no more. Beautiful lie. Beautiful lie. Beautiful lie. Beautiful lie. Beautiful lie. Beautiful lie.
and likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman. What did they do? Leaving the natural use of the woman. That's homosexuality, man. You have to understand that. When you're looking at what the Bible is saying, it's bringing forth the conditions of this, of this earth, man. And, it, and the information is vital in regards to that. Go ahead. Burn in their lust one toward another. What did they do? Burn in their lust one toward another. Go ahead. Men with men. What? Men with men. Men with men. Come on. Working that which is unseemly. Working that which is unseemly. Come on. And receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. Right. So you have to understand that, man. So the Bible is outlining what? Homosexuality, man. So again, man, this ain't no bash the homosexual campaign. All right? What we're saying is that the Most High have laws. And if you want to be at peace with him, the God of Israel, you going to follow his laws. And he has outlined a certain level of behavior that you're supposed to act on this earth. Come on. Verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain Yahweh in their knowledge. Read. Yahweh gave them over to a reprobate mind. So he gave them over to a reprobate mind. So as we were saying, man, you know, when you're dealing with homosexuals, do you want these, these people with a reprobate mind teaching your children? You want them to be your teachers at your school? You want them to be your administrators? You want, you want them to be your, uh, 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 your working at your daycare? Taking care of your children, right? Because there's something wrong with their minds. Come on. To do those things which are not convenient. They're going to do those things which are what? Not convenient. Not convenient. Come on. Being filled with all unrighteousness. Hold up now. So the Bible is about to outline these specific spirits and different mindsets that they will be under. All kind of demons come upon you when you deal with the spirit of uh, homosexuality. Come on. Fornication. What? Fornication. Read. Wickedness. What? Wickedness. Wickedness, man. Wickedness. Fornication. Unexplicit sex, man. Sex with children. Bestiality. Right? All, all, kind, of, all kind of fornication this embodies, man. Come on. Covetousness. What? Covetousness. Go ahead. Maliciousness. Right. Full of envy. They're full of what? Envy. Envy. Come on. Murder. What? Murder. They're full of murder, man. Go ahead. Debate. Debate. Go ahead. Deceit. Deceit. Malignity. Mal malignity. Malignity. Shalaki. Malignity. Whisperers. Whisperers. Come on. Backbiters. Backbiters. Haters of Yahweh. They're haters of, of the Creator. Why? Because he tell them that they should act like this, man. He say, he say they should act like this. But you know who say you, you can act like this and it's okay? Jesus Christ. Whose real name is Cesare Borgia, the second son of Pope Alexander, man. Right? Who says, do whatever you want to, all is forgiven, man. But listen, understand this. There can be no forgiveness, man without repentance, which is what? A turning away of your wicked acts, man. Not doing those things anymore. Come on. Despiteful. What? Despiteful. Read. Proud. They're proud, man. Go ahead. Boasters. Boasters. Inventors of evil things. See, so now they're coming up with ways, like the example I gave earlier, about you leaving your son with a, a female who dealing with homosexuality. You say, well, it's okay. She's not looking at my son because she likes women. But the Bible says she's a what? Inventors of evil things. She's an inventor of evil things, man. She's going to come up with ways to mess with your children, man. I wouldn't trust them. I wouldn't trust them in regards to what the Bible said, the spirits that come up on them. Come on. Disobedient. What? Disobedient. Go ahead. To parents. Right. Without understanding covenant breakers. Right. So this is why a lot of homosexuals commit suicide. Not because they, they're just being picked on and, and nobody likes them. All right. That's not why. 
maybe in some certain cases, but a lot of times it's because these, these demonic spirits come upon them when they deal with that specific behavior. And they don't tell you about this when you go into that specific act. They don't tell you that all these wicked spirits come upon you. Come on. Covenant breakers. What? Covenant breakers. Without natural affection. Without natural affection. Come on. Implaceable. In what? Implaceable. Go ahead. Unmerciful. Unmerciful. Go ahead. Who's knowing the judgment of Yahweh, that they which commit such things are worthy of of death. Wait a minute, is that the New Testament? What did it say? Who knowing the judgment of Yahweh, that they which commit such things, they that commit such things, what? Are worthy of death. Now, we didn't say that. That's thus said the Holy Bible. The Bible says, they that commit these acts are worthy of death, man. Mm. Understand that. So we're not here to say, Let's get on our campaign where we're going to go kill homosexuals. That's not what we're saying. I want to make that very clear. What we're saying is because I'm sure it's people out there that's watching these videos that have a sincere heart that actually want to turn from being a homosexual. They don't want to be a homosexual. All right? But, but, but demons are upon them. So what we're saying is pray to the Heavenly Father. All right? Change your behavior, change your surroundings and your environment, and you'll be able to fight against this demon, man. Because this is a spirit that you can overcome through the spiritual power of the Heavenly Father, man. So we're not saying that it's too late. But when Amashiach Yahweh comes back, it will be too late. So it's time for you to change your ways, man. Change your ways. And, it, 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 and there's different degrees because they try to say, well, Oh, well, being a homosexual is like, you know, telling lies or, or, or stealing. No, it's not. It's different. The Bible says, they that commit such acts are worthy of death. Let's go to the Old Testament. Leviticus chapter 20, verse 13. Leviticus chapter 20, verse 13. Bring it out. And it reads. If a man also lie with mankind. Hold up. If a man lie with what? With mankind. Come on. As he lies with a woman. Uh-huh. Both of them. What? Have, both of them. Both of them. The giver and the receiver. Go ahead. Have committed an abomination. So you have those that go into prison, right? And they go into prison. They say, well, I'm not a homosexual. I, I might have had sex with a man, but I was the giver. I wasn't the receiver, uh, so so I'm not I'm not a homosexual. It, it, it's the one who was receiving was a homosexual. What does the Bible say? <laughs> if a man also lie with mankind, uh -huh. as he lies with a woman, uh -huh. both of them have committed. Hold up! It says what? Both of them. Both of them, the giver and the receiver. Understand that. Come on. Have committed an abomination. Have committed an abomination. Let's go. They shall surely be put to death. What does the Bible say? They shall surely be put to death. Because when you deal with that act, all of these spirits in Romans just spoke of come upon you. You have to understand that, man. Let me get Proverbs chapter 17, verse 15. Let me finish this out. Right? Okay, yeah, come. Their blood shall be upon them. The Bible says their blood shall be upon them. Why? Because they're the ones committing the act. Uh, Proverbs 17, verse 15. Uh-huh. He that justifieth the wicked. Now you say, well, brother, you know, you know, it's okay if the organ player is a homosexual. He comes to church every Sunday, okay. you know, and he plays the organ so well, and he praises the Father. He's He's asking for forgiveness, but yet he's still a homosexual. Right. If I stole from you, right, and every time I come to your house, I steal, right? Then I say, come to you and say, brother, I'm sorry for stealing from you. Then next week I come to your house and steal again. Have I stopped stealing? We're not going to be okay till I stop stealing from you, <laughs> okay? So right. therefore, you're not going to be okay till you stop dealing with the spirit of homosexuality, man. 
You have to stop. You can't be a homosexual, ask for forgiveness, and stay a homosexual. You can't do that. Understand that. So the Bible says what? He that justifieth the wicked. Well, you know, the brother's, you know, he's a good person. You know, he helps the community. He pays his tithes. You know, he helps the women cross the street. He goes to the old folks' home and he helps people. He's all right. Read it again. He that justifieth the wicked. When you're sitting there trying to justify this wickedness, read. And he that condemneth the just. And condemn the just. Oh, you wrong for saying something against homosexuals. See, this is what they do. No sooner do we tell you what the Most High say, now we the ones with the problem. Look, let's make this clear. We didn't write this book. Okay? We are this humble servants reading it and expounding upon it. The Bible says we are to be the watchmen. We are to tell you of your sins. Let's get that, by the way. That's Ezekiel. We are to tell you of your sins. Ezekiel chapter 3, start at verse 17. All we hear is just to let you know. Once we let you know, then our hands are clean. So we want to make sure we're going on record that we put this information out to the people, and, and now our hands are clean. Let's go. Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 17. And it reads, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman. I have made thee a what? A watchman. Uh huh. Unto the house of Yasha'ala. Right. Therefore, hear the word of, at my mouth, and give them warning. From, and, and do what? And give them warning from me. And that's all we're doing. We're here to give you warning. That's it. Right. So, those that are dealing with the spirit of homosexuality, get yourself together, man. Before it's too late, man. Read it again. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Yasha'ala. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. Let me get Ezekiel 33 and 7. Hold that, what you got there. Stay right there. Let him get 33 and 7. So thou, O son of man. Uh huh. I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Yasharala. He has set us a, as a watchman. So don't get mad at us when we're proclaiming the words of the Most High Power. Come on. Therefore, thou shalt hear the words at my mouth. Understand that. Come on. And warn them from me. And warn them from the Heavenly Father. That's our job, man. Come on. Pick back up where you left off. Verse 18. Uh-huh. When I say unto the wicked, uh -huh. thou shalt surely die. You're going to get put to death if you continue with your wicked behavior, man. Come on. And thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way. If we don't proclaim this truth unto you, we in trouble. Understand that. And I'm not getting in trouble for none of you. <laughs> Understand that. I'm going to do what the Heavenly Father birthed me to do. Uh -huh. And that's be a prophet unto the nation. Not saying I'm a prophet. But I'm just proclaiming the information unto you, thus saith the Most High Power. Let's not get it twisted for all you simple naysayers out there. Okay, come on. To save his life. To what? To save his life. We're trying to save the lives of the homosexual here. Come on. The same wicked man right. shall die in his iniquity. Right, read on. But his blood will I require at thine hand. So his blood will be on us. If we don't proclaim this truth. That's why the Bible said in Proverbs, he that justifies the wicked, man. We're not going to do that. We're going to tell you, hell no, that is wrong. Come on. Verse 19. 
Yet if thou warn the wicked, uh -huh. and he turn not from his wickedness. So once we once we put it out there, come on. Nor from his wicked ways. Nor from his wicked ways, come on. He shall die in his iniquity. He shall die in his iniquity. Now what? But thou hast delivered thy soul. We are clean. God. Understand that. It, it, it's not upon us anymore. We have done our righteous service, which is proclaimed as truth, man. All right? So now let's drop that. And let's go to Deuteronomy 23 and 1. This is very critical. All right? Because... What, what's the guy's name? Bruce Banner? What, what's his name? Uh, 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 yeah. Bruce Jenner? <laughs> Bruce Banner. <All> right. <laughs> the man turned into the Incredible Hulk, okay? Yeah, but look. Bruce Banner. Jenner, right? Yeah. Bruce Jenner, all right? You know what the hell I'm talking about here. <laughs> all right? So now, this man had had, listen, I don't know. Is he fully a woman now? I, I don't know. He, he, he still he still loves women. What? He still likes women. Or he still has a male woman. He's got the word. Okay. Listen, that that's utterly confusing. Then he turned into a lesbian. So the man went wait a minute. So the man was a man uh -huh. and he got changed to a woman that still like women. If that ain't the epitome of confusion, listen. <laughs> look, I, look, I don't keep up with this madness, okay? But if, whatever, what we're about to read is this. Those that are having ambition for a sex change, okay? Like, uh, what, what's, what's the cat name, uh, Stax? It's a, it's, it, it, it's a so-called video vixen, all right, that's been linked up with a lot of celebrities. And I'm going to show you a couple of pictures here. Take a look at this. When you look at this, the, the, this was a man that actually got a sex change to be a woman. All right? So now, does the Bible speak of this? Let's go. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 1. This got to be the greatest book on the earth. Come on. And it reads, He that is wounded in the stone. He that is wounded in the stones. Come on. Or have his private member cut off. Or have his private member cut off. Shall not enter into the congregation of the Most High. Understand that you're not going to make it into the into the kingdom of heaven if you didn't have a sex change, man. So you need to be thinking about that before you running around telling my God made me a woman in a, a, a man's body. You have lost your mind. Yeah. That is the spirit of reprobate. See, yeah. you have in, inventors of wicked things, man. See. So the Bible says what? He that is wounded in the stone, uh -huh. or hath his private member cut off, right, shall not enter into the congregation of the Most High. So you won't enter into the congregation if you have a sex change. You need to think about that and post that scripture to any homosexual that's thinking about having a sex change, man. All right? All right, one second here. All right, so now let's move on to Proverbs 12 and 26. Because our people, man, are the righteous. But these wicked ways, we've been surrounded by this kingdom of filth, man. All right, this kingdom of filth. All right, is at, at will what influence us, man? So let's let's get this. Proverbs twelve verse twenty six. Uh huh. Bring it on. The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor. We are uh, we are more excellent than our neighbors. Come on. But the way of the wicked uh huh seduces them. So now you see that these wicked ways have influenced a lot of our people, man. So much so, people like uh, uh, Tay Diggs, mm -hmm. okay? Tay Diggs is, is playing in some play with lipstick on, looking like a, a drag queen or something, man. Like Grace Jones. Yeah, and, 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 and acting as if this is okay. Tyler Perry, acting as if this is okay. Martin Lawrence, 
I mean, the list goes, Eddie Murphy, the list goes on and on and on. Okay? This is wickedness. Come on. Let's get, uh, let's go to the book of Maccabees here. Because what's the guy named, uh, with the Penn State situation? Sandusky. Yes, Sandusky. Sandusky. All right. What you have to understand is allowing your children to go and participate in these athletic events is something that goes all the way back to the past. And it's something of evilness, man. It's something of evil when you look at what comes along with this. We didn't always participate in this, but what? The influence of the wicked, man, seduces us, man. All right? So now we're going to go into a specific account about athletics, dealing with the book of Maccabees. Come on. Second Maccabees 4 and 9 through 12. All right, 2 Maccabees, chapter 4, verse 9, and it reads, Remember how our fathers were delivered. Is that what you read on that book? 4 and 9. Yeah. Shalaki. Second Maccabees chapter 4 verse 9. Bring it out. And it reads, Besides this, he promised to assign a hundred and fifty more, if he might have license to set him up a place for exercise. A license to set up what? A license to set him up a place for exercise. To set him up a place for exercise. Come on. And for the training up of youth in the fashions of the heathen. And training up what? And training up of youth. They want to train up the youth, man. They want to train up the youth and then teach them all kind of pedophilia and all type of sick madness, man. That's why we're going to be going into these videos and we're going to be dealing with an eight-year-old boy that is exposing a whole community, man, a whole community of people that are dealing with pedophilia, man. And it's this eight-year-old boy is giving a confession of what his father's done. And repeatedly through the video, he says, my father is the boss. He's the boss of all this. Which means he, 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 he records sexual acts with children. You got parents involved, several schools involved, teachers involved, administrators involved. A whole community of this, man. And the little boy is expressing himself only at eight years old. Said that all the children, a school of over 200 children have, have relations with him. Teachers have relations with him. Parents have relations with him. They have, they have little parties where they go and, and, and make these children do all kind of wickedness, man. And that's why we spoke about Esau being, Esau, this is the Esau's kingdom, man. This is what they deal into. This is what they into, man. Understand that. Come on. And to write them of Jerusalem by the name of Antiochian, verse 10, which when the king had granted and he had gotten Shalaki, yeah, verse 10, which when the king had granted and he had gotten into his into his hand the rule he forwith brought his own nation to the Greekish fashion right verse 11 and the royal and the royal privileges uh, granted of special favor to the Jews by the means of John the father of Epolium or ye Polymus, who went and who went ambassador to Rome for enmity and aid, he took away, 
and putting down the government which was according to the law, he brought up new customs against the law. Come on. Verse 12. For he built gladly a place of exercise. Right. There you go. Place of exercise. Come on. Under the tower itself. Right. And brought the chief young men under his subjection. Right. The chief what men? Young men. The young men. There you go again. Namda, the National Society of Man Boy Love. This is where we're at now. Homosexuality, the rights of homosexuals, alluding to the rights of pedophiles, man. This is where we are, family. They're going, they're fighting for rights for man, boy, love. Understand that. Come on. And made them wear a hat. And made them wear a hat. Which is these logos of these football teams, basketball teams, the Lakers, the New York. They made them wear a hat, man. Understand that. So this is where we are, right? So now we're going to go into this book here. It's called Love in Ancient Greece. And understand this. This is after the time of Alexander the Great. And it's going into... It's going into the specific behavior with these Edomites, man. Sickening. And we're dealing with a certain kind of relations of pedophilia and how it was open to the public and it was okay. It was not frowned upon. What they want to do, NAMDA's whole agenda is to lower the consent age. They already lowered it from 18 to 16. Now they want to lower it even further. Because their, their motto is, sex before eight or else it's too late. Madness. Madness. Take a look at this. So now, as you can see, as, as, as the video just showed you, that this right here is something that they're fighting to put in the open, to put to the public to make it acceptable. We're gonna go during a time in ancient times where it was acceptable, all right? So we're gonna start at page 64 here. Start at the, uh, nevertheless. All right. Love in ancient Greece, page 64. Nevertheless, it seems quite likely that pedestary was not all pederasty right. was not introduced into Greece or at any rate did not prevail there to any great extent. So it's letting you know that that pederasty was not originally with the Greeks because the Greeks were black people. Understand that. Until Alexander the Great and his father Philip came in, the Macedonians, came in and started to change things. It's going to tell us this. Come on. Before the Dorian invasion. Before what? The Dorian invasion. Understand that. Come on. For in historical times, right. as we shall see soon, it flourished mainly and attracted most attention among the populations of Dorian descent. Right. Which are the people from Macedon. Let's go. Homer describes the Achaean, Achaean and Messianian civilizations of the 13th and 12th century BC. Right. The age of bronze. Right. To all appearance, it was the Dorian invaders of the 11th century BC who introduced into Greece both the use of iron and homosexual practice. And what? homosexual practices. And homosexual practices. In this book, if you can see this, there's a whole chapter on homosexuality, man. Read that last part again. To all appearances, it was the Dorian invaders of the 11th century BC who introduced into Greece both the use of iron and homosexual practices. And homosexual practices, which means this did not originate with the original Greeks. 
This is something that was brought in to Greece. That'll let you know what with the invaders, the people from Macedon, the Edomites. Because if you look at any original Greek paintings, the original Greeks are Japhetic people. Japhetic people are black, dark-skinned people. You want to know what Japhetic people look like? Look at the Persians, right? Look at the Iranians, how dark they are. Those are what the original Greeks would look like until the time of Alexander the Great and his father Philip was brought in, and they brought what? The use of iron and homosexual practices. Understand that, man. Come on. In any case, the Greeks themselves considered that pederasty was of relatively recent origin among them. Exactly. See that? It was it was something that just came about. It wasn't something that we always did because those that follow the truth of Noah know that those acts we did, we were not supposed to participate in, man. Come on. In the Aratus attributed to Lucian, there is a dialogue in which the defender of homosexuality The what? The defender of homosexuality Come on. admits that it is not a very ancient custom. Exactly. Let's go. At former a post, he said male love affairs were unknown. What? Male love affairs were unknown. Come on. In those days, it was thought indispensable to couple with women in order to preserve the human race from extinction. So all they wanted to do was to deal with women to, 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 to keep from being extinct, man. Come on. Only with the advent of divine philosophy did homosexual uh, homosexuality develop. We should be careful not to condemn an invention merely because it came late. Right. Let us agree that the old customs arose from necessity, but that subsequent novelty due to ingenuity of men ought to be more highly regarded. See, so they're trying to actually justify the madness. Yeah. Come on. In Plutarch's Eroticos, on the other hand, the champion of heterosexual love exclaims, Homosexuality resembles a son born late. Right. Of parents past their maturity. Right. Or a bastard child of darkness seeking to supplant his elder brother. Exactly. Come on. Legitimate love. For it was only yesterday, or at best the day before yesterday, that the pederast came slinking into our gymnasium. Right. What? Slinking into the where? Our gymnasium. Understand that pedophilia is sinking into their gymnasium. And, and read that what you had again, that last part about the youth. Twelve. For he built gladly a place of exercise under the tower itself and brought the chief young men under his subjection. The chief, and brought the chief young men for what exercise? Here we go again, now we're dealing with the Greeks while all of this stuff uh, originated with. Come on. To view the games. To what? To view the games. Read that last part again. Salaki. Yesterday, yes. or at best, the day before yesterday, that the preteros came slinking into our gymnasium. Slinking into our gym, what gymnasium? Where, which is a place for exercise. Come on. To view the games in which youth then first began to strip for exercise. Be, where, they, where they first began to strip for exercise. It wasn't like that at first. But now they come in and say, oh yeah, well let's strip the youth. Seeing what these brothers was dealing with, the Maccabees, man. Understand that. Come on. Quite quietly at first. Oh, it was quiet at first. Come on. He started touching and embracing the boys. Wait a minute. He started doing what? Touching and embracing the boys. Do you understand the psychology of a homosexual man? This is pedophilia, man. 
This is what it's alluding to, family. Come on. But gradually, in those arenas, uh -huh. he grew wings. He rose being always represented wings, and then there was no holding him. Right, now, so first he was kind of modest with his behavior. Right. Then it's just like he was no hose bars. Got his wings. Right? Yeah, come on. And then there was no holding him. Yeah, right. Nowadays, he regularly insults conjugal love and drags it through the mud. He drags normal love between man and a woman. He does what? Drags it through the mud. He drags it through the mud, man. All right? So this is what what these homosexuals or pedophiles do when they get higher ranks. They get to high level. They start speaking against uh, uh, others because they want people to do them. Now let's get Okay, page 65, homosexuality. Right. The passage by uh, Plutarch notes an important fact. There can be no doubt that the development of homosexuality right. was connected with the rise of gymnasiums. Wait a minute, wait a minute. The what? The rise of gymnasiums. The connection of homosexuality was in conjunction with what? The rise of gymnasiums. Understand that, man. That's your YMCA. Understand that, man. Come on. And arenas. And what? And arenas. So that's for all those that want to let their children be participating in sports. All right? You want to let your child go do this. You want to go take up to this event. You want to take him to go to this event. All right? That's where homosexuality derives from. Understand that. Read it again. This passage by Plutarch notes an important fact. There can be no doubt that the development of homosexuality was connected with the rise of gymnasiums and arenas in which boys practices practiced the five exercises of the pentalon. Wow. Understand that. Come on. Which comprised wrestling. What? Wrestling. Wrestling. Come on. The foot race. The foot race. Leaping. Leaping. Throwing the discus. Right. The hurling of the javelin. Right. Others were boxing and pancreation. Right. And the pancreation. Come on. A mixture of fist fighting and wrestling. <laughs> right. The competitors were always naked. They what? The competitors were always naked. Now imagine getting on the floor with, with wrestling somebody naked. I don't see no fun in that, man. Boxing and foot racing, butt naked, man. Come on, man. This is the Greeks, man. Come on. And watched. And watched by um, admiring spectators. Come on. In the same work. Plutarch tells us that Poseidon, in love with a certain youth, but kind. Hold up, he was in love with what? A certain youth. In love with a certain youth, a grown man. Come on. But kind, whom a rich widow wanted to marry. Right. Imitated ill-conditioned, ill-conditioned lovers of the ordinary sort and trying to prevent his friend from marrying. Right. The man's only object was to prolong... Hold up, the who? The man... I want to make this clear. That was a what? The man... He was a man. Come on. Only object was to prolong the pleasure he took in watching the boy strip oh, in the God. arena. The pleasure that he took in what? In watching the boys strip in the arena. Come on. While he still retained his virgin beauty. Right. Most gymnasiums contain not only a statue of Hermes. Right. But also one of Eros. Come on now. We have already quoted Athenus to the effect that there was an image of Eros at the academy which was the gymnasium in which Pluto met his disciples. 
the Greeks were all Salaki. The Greeks were at all times, as were noted in the case of Hermer's Helen, most sensitive to physical beauty, whether masculine, masculine or feminine. This subsubility, subsubility was felt even in the most ascetic of friendships. Right. When the lovers desired when the what? When the lover desired nothing more from his beloved than the pleasures of the eye, it should be borne in mind that women were almost entirely excluded. Hold up, what? Read that again. It should be borne in mind. It should be borne in mind, come on. That women were mostly entirely excluded. That women were mostly and entirely excluded, family. This is a man-boy love association. That's what this says here. See? This is madness on the highest level, man. Understanding that this was something that was openly accepted. They are trying to get that back with NAMDA, man-boy love association. Come on. The women were almost entirely excluded from Greek social life. Come on. Which resembled a man's club. Right. Which resembled a what? A man's club. Come on. This was especially so at Athens. Where? At Athens. Come on. For at Sparta, girls and women had more freedom of movement. In the following chapter dealing with marriage, customs, and the lives of women confined in a genica, we shall dwell more explicitly on the extraordinary fact, so amazing at first sight, that many of the ancient Greeks lavished all their sexual roots, rooted affection upon boys. On what? All their sexual rooted affections upon boys. All of their affection, sexual affections upon boys, man. This is how homosexuality leads to pedophilia. Homosexuality has been made open to the public, saying, claiming that they have taken the, 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 the civil rights movement and given it to themselves. Now they are open to the public to be homosexuals. The next step is pedophilia to be open to the public man boy love this is what they're leading to family can you see this can you not see this they're going to take the civil rights that the homosexualities took and put it upon man boy love well if the little boy is okay with it then it's okay madness come on for they considered members of the other sex inferior beings. They considered women inferior beings. Come on. Lacking all education. Lacking education. And refinement. Refinement. Good for nothing but to ensure a posterity. All they wanted women for was to you know, produce children. But they want to have all their love and all their lustful acts to be executed through boys. Madness. Come on. It was in the arenas above all that special friendships were formed. Understand that, man. This is why we have a video called Is Sports for Israelites? Are they? Because, read it again. It was in the arenas above all that special friendships were formed. It was in the arenas above all that special friendships were were formed. Understand that, man. Come on. Moreover, if Pluto's dialogues all to be credited in this connection on certain festive occasions, the establishment in question were the scenes of positive courts of love, in which youths and mature men discussed Cupid's country, as it came to be called in later times, in the Lysis, Socrates meets a certain hippopotamus, hippopotamus. Now hold up, now I'm glad you said that. Because think about this for a second. 
we deal with what? Valentine's Day, right? Yep. Okay, Valentine's Day. Now, what, what, what goes on with Valentine's Day? They have what? Something called what? Cupid, what we just read about, right? Mm -hmm. Cupid. What is Cupid? A little boy. Naked little boy. A naked little boy flying around with bow and arrows, right? With hearts on them, right? Valentine's Day have nothing to do with the woman, man. Valentine's Day had everything to do with the promotion of man-boy love. Read it again. Let's see here. It was in the arenas above all that special friendships were formed. Uh-huh. Moreover, if Plato's dialogues are to be credited in this connection, uh -huh. on certain festive occasions, the establishment in question were the scenes of positive courts of love in which youths and mature men discussed Cupid's country. Understand that with youth and what? Mature men. Mature men, right? Discussed Cupid's country. Understand that, man. Now you running around to I want some chocolates and this is about love and it's, no, it's about homosexuality, man. That's what it's about. And you have embraced it with your celebration of Valentine's Day, which don't have nothing to do with women. Understand that, man. And women get that spirit on too yeah. Valentine's Day. Yeah. Oh, you didn't give me no chocolate? Yeah. Why they want a chocolate, huh? Why they want a chocolate? Because it was yeah. Israelite slaves that was involved, that, that was taking the brunt of this. Black men. That's why they wanted them a little chocolate. Understand that, man. Come on. As it came to be called in later times, in the Lysis, Socrates meets a certain Hippothalus, whom he immediately recognizes as a lover. Wow. Come on. For Socrates, as he himself declares, is an expert in such matters. Right. Read on. The philosopher adds the others whom he loves, Hippothalus blushes and refuses to answer. He is too modest and timid to say, but one of his friends reveals the secret. Right, come on. It's all very well, Hippothalus, he says. All right, so let's drop that and jump over here to 67 here. Right here? Yes, let's just start. Elias. Elias, with charming Timidity uh -huh. hesitates to join the group with Socrates. Right. For the youth had caught sight of Hippothalus. Right. His lover. His with what? Them, his lover. The youth lover. Come on. With them. Right. But at last he decides, supported by a companion, to approach. Conversation begins. It is entirely on the subject of Philia. Now, all of what? Pedophilia. Understand that pedophilia. That's what it's about. Pedophilia, man. See, so this is what we're saying. We go into this history so you can see that this thing was trying to be played out today. They want to push it to the forefront. This is the next movement. Pedophilia. Let's change the things there. You got something there? Yeah. All right, come on, bring it out. Philia, a name which in Greek was applied to all affectionate sentiments whether in the family or elsewhere. So that means what? Incest. Oh I got a video that's on this, that, that's gonna be with this video, where a little boy, eight years old, talk about his father. Listen, I, I, I just hardly even verbicate this. But it's talking about his father having sexual relations with him. That's all I'm gonna say. I'm gonna let you all watch it yourself, okay? But this is madness. Whether it be in the family or out of the family. Read it again. A name which in Greek was applied to all affectionate sentiments, whether in the family or elsewhere. Whether it be in your family or elsewhere. Any more on that? No, no more on that. You got something else? It talks about the, uh, the word friendship. On the spot. Come on, let's go. The English word friendship. Understand this word friendship now. Come on. Is a very imp imperfected translation of it. Right. The most important point at issue was who best deserved the glorious name of Philos. Philos, come on. The lover of his beloved. 
the question was also rise whether flattery of a beloved person won him over or on the contrary aroused his contempt. Wow. So that's where they get the friendship. That's where they get the word friendship from is some homosexual man boy love. Come on, man, change the pace, man. It's oh mad. <laughs> Start at the orange thing. It was considered shameful. What page you on there? Page 68. Go ahead. It was considered shameful in Crete for a well born boy not to have a lover. Read it again. It was considered shameful in Crete for a well born boy not to have a lover. Understand this, this is the purpose of this video. Is to let you understand that the next movement is pedophilia. This is what we're headed for. They have taken they're gonna take the rights of gays and put it upon and, and, and claim that they were being held down or, or, or oppressed. And they're gonna say the same thing with pedophilia. This is what's next, man. Read it again. It was considered shameful in Crete for a well-born boy not to have a lover. Come on. But lads who had already been abducted were subsequently regarded with great respect. So if you as a little boy, you've been abducted, you're going to get treated with respect. This is madness. Come on. Xenophon, on the constitution of Sparta, reports that in Biotoya, men and boys likewise paired off in actual marriages. Madness. Oh, Do you see this? My God. Do you see this? They are repeating this. Oh, that, that it's all coming back to the forefront. Come on. Hold on, I lost my way. Salaki. At Sparta itself, boys who had reached the age of twelve. Wait, had, wait, reached the age of what? Twelve. Go ahead. And had a good reputation. Uh huh. Obtained faithful lovers. Obtained what? Faithful lovers. Twelve years old, man. Madness. Come on. Who shared in the good or bad opinion held of the children. Right. Come on. It is said that on one occasion when a boy had let fall a vulgar expression, his lover, not himself, was punished by the magistrates. Plutarch, life of Lacrugus, we shall return to this educational side. Just drop that, just drop down to the, the next one there, the okay. age. The age of the beloved boys seemed always to have been between 12 and 20. Right. A Greek epigram declares desirable is the bloom of a boy of 12. Desirable is what? Is the bloom of a boy of 12. Understand that, man. This is madness. Come on. But that of 13 is much more delightful. Uh-huh. Even sweeter is the flower of love that blossoms at 14 years. Oh my goodness. Come on. It charm, its charm increases still more at 15. 16 is the divine age. A boy of 17, I would not dare to woe. Zeus alone would have the right to do so. Come on. As a rule, the first signs of of down on the chin of the beloved deprive him of his lover. Oh man, listen, stop. Drop down to the orange thing. This particular Agathon was a tragic poet like Euripides himself. It is he who, in Plutos, plays host to the guest he has invited to celebrate the success of one of his plays. He was also mocked in the Themophilesius of Aristophanes, one of his guests of the occasion, on that occasion, for his effeminate taste. For his what? For his effeminate taste. Right. 
So now, what we're going to do is, going to hold that. You ready to wrap this thing up? All right. But we're going to go into the Silicon Doron. They always try to speak about King James, but let's see what King James said. Which will make your spirit and judgment to be left to lock it. Which will make your spirit. What page you on? Hold up now. The Silicon Hold page. up now. What about the all right, so we're dealing with King James here. All right, so we're going into the Basilicon Doron. Let me let them see this book here. Basilicon Doron. Because they like to say King James was a homosexual, but he had his own writings to his son that spoke against homosexuality. Come on. Page number? Uh, page 23. I thought by being gracious at the beginning to win all men's hearts, to a loving and willing obedience. Right. Go down here. Yeah. But as the severe justice of yours upon all offenses right. will be but for a time, as I have already said, so is there some horrible crimes. Some horrible crimes, come on. That ye are bound in confidence uh -huh. never to forgive. There's certain crimes you are never to forgive. Come on. Such as witch witchcraft. Such as witchcraft. Willful murder. Willful murder. Incest. Incest. We just heard that in the Greek book they dealt with incest. Come on. And especially within the degrees of consagonite. Right. Sodomy. And what? Sodomy. And what? Sodomy. Understand that, man, but King James was a homosexual. You got to be out of your damn mind. Let's go. Next page. Yeah. Page 84. Come on. Which will make your spirit and judgment to be left thought out, thought of, Salaki, but specifically assured, but especially assured right. to be effeminate in your clothes. So it said, is you being a feminine in your clothing, man? Don't dress like a woman. Martin Lawrence, don't dress like a woman. So Tyler Perry, come on. It says, but especially is you to be effeminate in your clothes. Is you being effeminate in your clothes, come on. And perfuming. Don't smell like a woman, come on. Preening. And, and don't be all dressing up and getting all fancy like a woman, come on. Or such like. Or anything like that, man. Get yourself together, man. Come on. In your language, be plain. In your language, be plain. Speak like a man, damn it. Come on. Honest. Natural. Right. Comely. Right. Clean. Uh-huh. Short. And fitness or fetishes eschew both the extremities as well in not using any rooster called corrupt laid as book language. As book language, come on. And pin. Right. And inkhorn. Right. Terms. And least of all, magna, magnard. Right. And effeminate terms. Don't be using effeminate terms. Now this is King James here. All right, who's speaking against homosexuality, man. Understand that. And so now we're going to wrap this thing up because we're going to get this last page here because I'm, 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 I'm just about done listening to this filth, okay? But we're going to listen to this, this last page just so you can understand that what went on in the past shall happen now. And they're trying to push. I want to make this clear. They're pushing pedophilia as the next Uncharted land for America. Come on. Okay, we're back in uh, Love in Ancient Greece, page 70. Come on. Homosexual love. What? Homosexual love. Come on. Like heterosexual. Right. Affected the whole mind. Affected what? The whole mind. So when we went in Romans, 
And it said all of these demons that's going to come upon you for dealing with that, it lets you know in this book here that homosexuality affects the whole mind. Come on. Affected the whole mind of the lover if the sentiment was strong. Right. Yeah, drop down there. I would rather look at him than any else in the world. Shalaki. So now this is a story of a man that was was so in love with a little boy and, 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 and welcomed all kind of mistreatment just to be around this little boy. Utter madness. Come on. I would rather look at him than anything else in the world. Uh-huh. I would cheerfully agree to be blind to all other objects. I resent night and sleep because they remove him from my sight. I am grateful to the sun and daylight because they allow me to behold him. Madness. Though I am found of luxury, I would rather give all my possessions to Cleinias than receive their equivalent from someone else. I would rather give all of my, the, everything I own to this little boy than to get equal value for them. Come on. I would prefer slavery under Cleinias. I will be a slave to this little boy. Come on. To my freedom as a citizen. Then didn't they have freedom as a citizen, man? That now this, this is this yo, this is what you call reprobate. Come on. <laughs> and work for his sake to rest for my own. Right. I would follow him even through fire. Right. His image is so deeply graven in my heart that if I were a painter or sculptor, I could produce an absolutely faithful portrait or burst, Chalaki, or bust of him in his absence. Man, hmm. this is, listen, close that. We are done with the filth. Hmm. Understand that. This is the love in ancient Greece, man. This is madness, man. But I wanted to share this with you. So you can get an understanding of what we're dealing with. Let me get Revelation chapter 18, man. Revelation chapter 18, start at verse 2. This is madness, man. All right, Revelation chapter 18, verse 2. And it reads, And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Read it again. Verse 2. Verse 3. Oh, okay. Verse 3. For all nations have drunk up the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Like verse 2. Listen good, family. Verse 2. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen. It's fallen. It's fallen. It's fallen. And has become the habitation of devils. And become the uh, habitation of devils. NAMBA, the National Association of Man Boy Love, man. This is what we are. My whole point to you today is for you to understand that homosexuality took the rights of the civil rights, took, took the movement of the civil rights movement and placed it upon themselves. Now, pedophiles are going to take the homosexual movement and put it upon themselves. They're going to claim that their rights are being infringed upon. They want to just be able to love the little boy as much as they can. This is where we are. This is the whole point of this video. Stand up. Stand up. And not allow this to happen to your children. Come on. And the hold of every foul spirit. Every foul spirit is in America. Come on. And a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. And a cage for every unclean and hateful bird, which means the evil and the wickedness is being held here, man. And I just want to let y'all know, man, the only way we're going to fight against this, because this is a spiritual war, the only way we're going to fight against it it's if we keep these laws, statutes, and commandments and learn how to love them, man. If you are a homosexual, fight that demon and come back to the laws, statutes, and commandments, which is the only thing that will save you, man. Uh, uh. Understand that. There's hope for you. And that hope is Hamashiach Yahweh 
by Shema Mashiach Yahweh Shai. By Shema Mashiach Yahweh Shai. And, and the laws that come with him is your only hope. So this is not a we hate gay campaign. This is for those of our nation that are dealing with that spirit. It's time to wake up, man. Let me get uh, Acts chapter 13. What is that, Romans? Romans. Romans 13. Romans 13 and 11. Understand this, family. Romans 13 and 11. Romans chapter 13, verse 11. And it reads, And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. It's high time to awake out of sleep, man. Come on. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. It's even closer than when we believe. Our Savior is coming back real soon. The question is, are you ready? Come on. Ecclesiastes 12, verse 13. Bring it on. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. We're going to hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Come on. Fear Yahweh. Do what? Fear Yahweh. Do what? Fear Yahweh. Read on. And keep his commandments. Read. For this is the whole duty of man. And with that, we want to salute and say, Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shabbat Kwam Kwam Yasharala. Kwam Yasharala. Kwam Yasharala. Kwam Yasharala. Shalom Okay, so your dad told you him and the year four teacher yes. are BFFs. Yeah. Okay, and when did he tell you that? He told uh, when he was doing the sex to me. He does sex to me. What does that mean, sex? What do you mean? He touches me in the private. Um, he he um, he touches me in the private. Um, he sticks a plastic willy yeah. in my bottom, and it bleeds then. Okay, so yes. So. Your dad does sex to you, yes. and what that means is he touches your privates yes. and put a plastic willy in, my bottom. in your bottom. Yes, yeah, big fat one. Okay, so how do you know it's a plastic willy? Um, I, f I felt it before. What do you mean you felt it before? I felt tell the willy. He told me he showed um he he let me felt the willy. Okay, so tell me what that looks like. This willy. It looks like a real willy, but, oh. um, but it's plastic. Okay. And what else can you tell me about it? Um, I, I'll tell you, there's an order of the willies. Of a the what? plastic. There's an order of them. High up and low down. And what does that mean? So, um, brown is the lowest, it's the third, but then second is the golden colour of right. the skin, and then it's white. White is the highest. Okay, so how many plastic willies are there? And millions. He he buys them and he also makes them. He's he he makes them in his shed. He melts the plastic and then he starts making it. And how do you know that? I seen him making before, and he has a friend called Daniel, and they make it. Right. So who's Daniel? Daniel, who's Daniel? is a um, he's a um he got from he got um, brown hair. Yeah. And got white skin, and he's really mean to me. He pushes me every time. Okay. He calls me an idiot. Okay. He kicks me. He kicks, he kicks me in the privates. Okay. We spoke about a lot there, so I just want to take it all bit by bit. Yeah. So the first thing you said was about this plastic willy, and you said about three colours, yeah. and they're three three sets. Did you say? Yes. Golden is the like. Got like it's like um like it's like this look look like this look gold silver and bronze it's just like that right so bronze is um bronze is black color skin black right okay and then and gold tell me is about that one first of all so the skin color black willy yes tell me about that what everything you know about it's this it's the third yeah so it's like bronze right okay so it's skin color black you said yeah. and you say it looks like a real willy. Yeah. And what else can you tell me about it? It's really big and fat and it hurts really much. What do you mean, big like, and fat? What does big and fat mean? It's really fat and it's... Show, can you show me that shape like again? That's that. 
Yeah, like okay, that. so it's that fat. Yeah. And then how long is it? No, they have different size. What do? My 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 dad got the biggest size. Because really. my dad is the boss of every single thing. Right. Okay. If we just talk about this, this yeah. black color, this black skin colored willy. Yeah. So you showing it's, it, yeah. you show me a shape, how big it was, yeah. and then you said. And then, so how long is it? So that's, you show me that really shape. Really long, like that long. So it's that long. Yeah. And you show me how wide it is. And then what does he do with it? And he sticks it in my bottom and it, and then after it, when he takes it out, it bleeds. So how does he stick it in your bottom? He um, pushes inside my bottom. Okay. Yeah, and then when he takes it out, it bleeds my bottom. Okay. So when did when was the last time this happened? No, um, uh, um, I'll tell him why he started doing it when I was a baby. Okay, but when was the last time it happened? The last time it ha ever happened um, is um, when I um, is um, when I when I stood the the last day of school. The last day of school. Yeah. So tell me about the last day of school. Yeah, we had a big party because it's the last day of school. Okay, so it's last day of school, we've had a big party. Yeah, at school. And my dad goes to the school and pa my dad doesn't let my dad doesn't let me learn anything. He doesn't let me have education. Okay. So you're at school, you said there's yeah. a big party. So yeah. who's at the party? Mr. Hollings, he's a he's the year four teacher. Yes, yes. Yeah, and, and an old teacher, um, and there's a um, lady. And when I was in year two, the, my old teacher. When I was in year two, she she moved school, yeah. and her name is Miss Sergeant, and she got blonde hair, and she got white skin, and she's from Brighton. Right. I mean, so she's from south or north, um, London. Is it how's it called? It's that language they say glass. Like, um, glass, glass, instead of glass, they, they say, say glass. glass wrong. Glass. Yes, glass, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I know. No, so she's got an accent like that where she says glass, glass. Yeah. Okay. And, and she says glass, but she says on my language, on my like accent on North, I can't remember, it might be North London. I haven't seen her for a long time. It might be North London or n South London. And right now she's in Brighton. Okay, she's from somewhere and she says things no, differently. No, so it might be South or North okay. London. Okay. Yeah, England. Okay, so um, she was there, Mr. Hollings was there. You said yes. your dad was there. Yes, the head teacher does it. Sticks a really in my bottom. Um, the head teacher's name is Mrs. For Mrs. Forstake. Forstake. Mrs. Forstake. Mrs. Forster. F O S. No, Mrs. Forstake. Forstake. Okay, yeah. Mrs. Forstake. And her first name is Kate. Kate. Yeah. Okay. And she got a sister, which is the second, the second head teacher. And her name is um, Mr. Mrs. Unwin. Okay. And it's and the sisters, and it's really strange what her her first name is also Kate too. Two sisters called Kate. Yeah, really strange. That is confusing. I bet for their mum it was confusing. Yeah. Um, and I heard they were saying Mrs. Forsett told me it's her sister. Are they real sisters or? Yeah. Do they have the same second name. Yeah, they have the same second name. Well, um, they don't have, they don't look the same now. But Miss Angwin, she would have time put some makeup on her. Does she? Okay, so you're having this party at school. Were there any children there at the party? Yes. So, children at the party. Yeah, all the children do sex to me. All the children. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, and there's, uh, do you know how much children there is in my um God. school? Um, two hundred. Two hundred children. And two, all two hundred children do sex to you. Yes. And also, other schools are involved. And other schools as well. Yeah. And how many? How long have you been going to that school? Since uh, when I was five years old. And how old are you now? I'm eight years old. So for three years you've been going to the school. No. Yeah, for three years. Yeah. Okay. 
So you're having the party, yeah. and then what's happened at the end of the party? Um, so um, my dad kills babies and he eats the meat. Okay, well let's just talk about yeah. the party day. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so the party. Yeah. What was the party like? I don't like the party. Why not? They touch me. Who? They kick me. My front privates to hurt me. So um, when they um, when they stick a uh, big plaster really in my bottom, and when it bleeds, if I cry, um, he um, he, give, um, he like do you know those um, um spaghetti spoons? Yes. Like the, yeah? yeah. Um, those metal ones. If I cry, he hits me on the head with it. Okay. But if I cry more, he hits me again. But if I cry more, um, the my the nurse teacher, Miss Marden, yeah. she injects in me, and I. A sleeping what, an injection on my neck, yeah. and then I fell asleep straight away. Okay. Um, what I'd like to go about, I just want to talk about just the party yeah. day. So I don't want to hear about anything else yeah. other than that day. Okay. So all the yeah. stuff that's happened on different days, yeah. we'll talk about. We will talk about. I promise, but yeah. not until after we've spoken about yeah, the party right day. Now, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Perfect. So you're at the party, you said you didn't really like the party. No, I hate it. Why do you hate the party? They hit me, they do all kind of stuff, and I'm a who's vegan, that? I'm a who's vegan. That? What, who's that? You said they hit me, who's they? Who hit you? My dad, all the teachers, my dad's friends. And where did they And also you? the parents do it too. And... Um, and they're really mean to me, really mean, the parents. Why are all these people so mean to you? They like being mean to me. I why? Know. Why? What's What have you done for them to... I don't nothing. understand. Why, why would they all be so mean to you? I did nothing. Okay. So... And pa my dad made up a really strange religion. Okay. Well, we'll talk about that. Remember what we're going to talk yeah. about to, at the moment. What we're going to talk about. Remember? What what we're we talking about? Yeah. What? When we're talking about what happens at the party. At the party, yeah. So yeah. you said they hit you. Tell me exactly what people hit you. Um, there's one that my dad got social services, and my my dad got friends. Yeah. And they come over too. Right. We're not talking about the party, are we? Tell me yeah. about the party. Who who hit you at the party? And the parents do, um, should I tell you the name of the parents? Were the, the parents at the party? Yeah, and should I tell the children names? Why was your mum not at the party for the parents were at the party? She doesn't do the sex to us. Was she at the party? Yeah, she no, no! Why wasn't she at the party? Why didn't she get invited? Because she doesn't touch us, she doesn't do sex to us. Why wasn't she at the party? Because she doesn't do sex to us. I know she doesn't do sex to so, but... And also because so, she's a vegan. Right. But that's not a reason not to go to a party, is it? No, you know, there is a, re a reason because there's only no... There's, because, she, because she's a vegan, there's n um, the party's non-vegan. So it's a non-vegan party? Yeah. So why was you allowed to go then? No, I'm allowed to go because... Um, they had me, and they can do whatever they want with me. But it was I a non-vegan party. I don't understand. How but I'm a vegan. Like yeah, and you said. And my dad is a vegan, but he lied to my mum about him being vegan. So I don't understand, right? Your mum wasn't allowed to the party because she's a vegan. Yeah, and but she you and your and dad were allowed to the party, but you're vegan as well. Yeah. So I don't, I don't understand why. How comes? Because yeah. if, we, if we were with mum, we'd have not went to a party. Well, if we were with my mum... So your mum hasn't gone to the party? No. So, what... But, what if we, but we are, were alone with our dad, so we could went to the party. We did. Okay, so that party... Yeah. And what time did the party finish? No, um, the party's for six hours. Six for the, a, from what time does it start, then? It starts from the morning. I'm not sure which kind of uh, time in the morning. From the morning, it's like school time. Right, okay. Instead of lessons, instead of literacy, yeah. numeracy, yeah. science, we had a sex, party. 
party and we ate babies and my dad um he he lied to my mum about being vegan okay so you've had there's this party yeah so where is the party held in the school in the school in the church and school it's in the church and the school yeah so whereabouts in the church and whereabouts in the school in the school part? in the church there's a black like um seat 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 and here's a little road and there's a little big okay. it's um like one two like three stairs like um it's really big mm. and then we dance there yeah so you're dancing what sort of da why was you dancing what music were you listening to we don't put music on but we just dance you just put, dance yeah, okay yeah we put all okay, kind so of music songs okay so you're dancing and who else was dancing any of the children everybody does okay everybody does the sex and right and what is the sex they uh, they touch me in the privates they tell me to lick the privates who says that my dad's my, the teachers everybody's okay so that's happened. And we didn't want to do that, but my dad made it. Oh, is it a beautiful lie? Uh, she told me a beautiful lie. Uh, she told me a beautiful lie. Uh, she told me a beautiful lie. Nigga name in the sky till the day I die. You ain't gotta lie no more. Beautiful lie. Beautiful lie. Is it a beautiful lie? Uh, she told me a beautiful lie. Uh, she told me a beautiful lie. Uh, she told me a beautiful lie. Nigga name in the sky till the day I die.